crash and burn. Hey everybody. So tonight, um, oh Jesus Christ, I should probably, hang on, there's an idea. Oh God. So, uh, tonight I am going to be discussing SLC Punk 2, Punk's Dead. Uh, fuck, I don't even know where to begin with this one. Hey! Yeah, I just wanted to jump in quickly and say that Dan Frampton already did a video about this movie from a couple of years back, and he did a 17-minute take on it, where he sort of like, he, he shows scenes from the first one in relation to the second one, and he's showing how the first one was a cult classic and how the end is incredibly sad. And then, you know, he, he begins to dive into the failure that is this movie. So I just figured I would point that out because his stuff is a hell of a lot more accessible than mine. Yeah, so now back to me, probably sitting a little more to the left or whatever. Yeah. Oh, the light's dying too. That's fun. And it's back. Having Bob, heroin Bob from the first one, like narrate this movie from beyond the grave is not a good idea when you factor in that so much time has passed that the actor who portrays Bob has of course aged. And then they put him in this white, like grim reaper type makeup. And you can clearly see how much he's aged because of the makeup. You can see the lines under his eyes. So it's like, how is he dead and yet still aging. <sighs> so there's that. And that's like, just as the movie starts. And then I knew right away, I'm like, oh God, I'm not going to be able to make it through this. How long is this piece of shit? And there's like red flag number two. The movie is an hour 15, which means this movie couldn't make it to the average runtime of an hour and a half to an hour 40 for a, a movie like this. And the worst part about it being an hour 15 is the fact that it already feels like a chunk of this is just filler. So if they had to f just use filler to get to the 115 mark, I mean, they stood no hope in hell of getting to the 130 mark because that would have made like well over a third of the movie be filler, which this movie already kind of is. I mean, they got ranted on the soundtrack and it does nothing. There's a... Uh, Fall Back Down, and Time Bomb, which by the time this movie was released, those two songs have been fucking overplayed. And I don't buy his friends, his little punk rock friends, Crash and whatever the chick's name is. I don't believe they're punks. Like with Steve-O and Heroin Bob and everybody from the first movie, I mean, of course, they were obviously actors playing a part, but I bought into it. I believed them. But with this one, I don't buy, I don't buy any of this. And it's really ironic because... Crash is played by Machine Gun Kelly, who I don't buy as a punk in this any more than I believe him being a punk in real life. I don't buy the... Perf I mean, Machine Gun Kelly's not a bad actor, but I just don't believe him or the chick as being like genuine punks. Bob tries to do the, the, the punk speeches that Steve-O did in the first one. At one point, he... Uh, talks about all the different types of punk music and the punk scenes that there are. And it just feels so forced and it's so cheap. And they try to like throw in this witty sort of Tarantino-esque dialogue. Like at one point, Bob and Trish's idiot goth son, well, it's not even really a goth, but call him that, the goth son. He says something about, yeah, I know it's as useless as nipples on a man. And that's supposed to be like the cutting edge dialogue. And we're all supposed to just fucking play right into it. No, no, this is trash. This movie is fucking dog vomit. And then, I mean, my biggest problem with this movie is how they just casually throw in that the, the chick whose name I can't remember because I don't give a fuck about her character is being molested by her father. And they handle that with absolutely no class or grace whatsoever. Her dad shows up at a gas station where they are and he punches her in the face and Crash and the, the goth do nothing. And then she grabs the, the goth's cane and starts smashing in her abusive, clearly her abusive father's windshield. And then her abusive father does nothing. She jumps off the car and of course he doesn't touch her again, which makes no sense because these aggressive pieces of shit that don't mind smacking their kids around would be, he'd beat her into a fucking coma for collapsing in his windshield. She then says, and it looks like you're going to have to jerk yourself off from now on. And it's like, there's no impact. There's no power. There's no um, 
There's nothing emotional about that revelation. She's just being molested. She hops in the car, she cries a little, and it's over. And then, oh Jesus, does anybody remember Sean, the fucking punk kid who used to wear the, the oven mitts? Well, he's still wearing oven mitts in this. And he fries himself on like a hundred hits of acid in the first movie. Well, all you have to do to beat uh, the damage caused by 112 hits of lysergic acid is go to rehab. Because now Sean is totally rehabbed and he's a state senator. Even though he still dresses like he's kind of homeless and like I said, still wears the, the, the oven mitts. Because God knows state senators all wear oven mitts and look homeless. So there was that. And then at the end of the movie, him and Trish are just together and happy and in love. Because this movie's writing is shit. Ah, oh, fuck. I made notes, but, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, yeah, his son is annoying and whiny. How his punk friends feel phony, yeah. Sean, yeah, 112 hits acid. He's fine now. It's no big deal, fuck. Uh, and the, the, the attempts at humor that pop up throughout this, they don't land. This movie's awful. And the soundtrack, even though, like, the bands are legit, but the soundtrack feels, def or sounds deflated. It just feels like the music is literally just there in the background. Like when Rancid kicks in with Time Bomb, you'd expect that that would sort of escalate things. Like it's a good way to sort of signal like a scene change. And that's a big song from a big band and blah, blah, blah. No, no. And the, the big concert, the punk concert, they end up uh, at the end uh, where, where, Bob, where Bob's son gets his ass kicked. Uh, Screeching Weasel's there, and I think the Dwarves are there, and there's a couple other bands. And I'm sure it's like a real punk show that they film this at, but their performances fall flat. Everything musically about this movie falls flat. Everything about this movie feels fake. Everything about this movie, it feels honestly like they just filmed the fucking rehearsals. I don't know. I mean, what the fuck am I watching? Like, I mean, and everybody in this got old. Like, I know a bunch of years have passed since the, the first one came out in 98, I think. But Trish looks old. Um, uh, John the Mod, he's now black metal, and he's played by James Duvall, who I really like, but he looks old. Sean, he's played by Devin Sawa. He's in this, or however you pronounce his name. He looks old. And it's like, John the Mod and um, uh, Sean were never close. Like, they got along, like, but it was established in the first movie that John was sort of like a diplomat, and he was able to move between the tribes. So when you see him buying acid off Sean, him and Sean are cool, of course, but him and Sean aren't, like, bosom buddies like they are in this thing. Like, they're, they're fucking each other's, like, ride or dies or whatever, like, besties forever, and it's like, that's just fucking stupid. Everything about this movie is just a complete and utter waste of time. I don't, I don't know, like... Why would you make this movie? SLC Punk does not need a sequel. It's like they made a fucking sequel to Fight Club. <laughs> you know, Fight Club 2. Tyler's back and he's still fighting. It's like, no, that's a horrible idea. And sequelizing SLC Punk is equally of a horrible idea. And that's it. That is where I'm going to leave it. So... Yeah, if you uh, really want to waste an hour 15 of your life, admittedly, I fast forward through the last 20 minutes of that punk show. I, I couldn't do it. Check this movie out. I don't know. Whatever. So like always, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I talked about this fucking garbage for, oh, almost 11 minutes. Like always, if you like this review or you like this, if you like this movie, wow, that's brave. Definitely do something nice for somebody. But like always, don't forget that you guys kick ass and the world is so much better because you are here. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to go talk about something more fun and that is the soundtrack from the first Tony Hawk's Pro Skater from way back. See you around. Have a good night or whatever. Yeah. <laughs>